Hello, hi and welcome back to some more Game Roulette with me, The Zero. We're playing Hidden Agenda. Uh, last time we just picked our cabinet. So our agriculture minister is Juliana Ortiz de Lanza, and she's got a couple of things we can talk to her about. She wants to talk about the disposition of the dictator's estates, uh, nationalism, popular organization and democracy, and land reform. Okay, those are all important things to talk about, but you know we're limited in the amount of things we can do. So let's go talk to our defense minister. Uh, Manuel Calderon Iglesia, he wants to talk about the shortages of food. This is a really big issue. Remember, 60% of our population is starving. Uh, death squads and human rights. Yeah, that death squads, that's pretty bad. And then he wants to talk about the control of the army, which would be important. Our internal affairs minister, Julio, uh, he wants to talk about the death squads and the human rights, nationalism, popular organization, democracy, and he wants to talk about healthcare, which would be important, but it's not the priority right now. And our external affair, uh, Ferrante Oberon, economic aid from the USA, military aid from the USA, and aid from socialist countries. All right. And the other thing we can do is we can go have encounters. So these are like a bunch of people, and we could go talk to them, and we'll have different effect and pot poss possible outcomes. But before we go talk about this, I think the most important thing we can do right now, our population is starving. We need to get that under control. Um, we need to sort, yeah, we need to sort our economy, but here's the thing. If people are starving, they will revolt. Like, almost, as long as people get food, they'll be fine. If we let the people starve, they will freaking throw us out, and they will support whoever comes around and say, we'll give you food. So I think the first thing we're going to do is deal with the food situation. So... Let's uh, deal about the shortages of food. Then we'll try to get our economy out and start exporting again. And then we'll try to deal with the army. I think that's sort of what I want to do. All right, so shortage of food. What did we fight a dictator for if not to help the people he oppressed? No chimerican child should go to bed hungry. Disruption of the past year created food shortages. What drive the price so high, however, is the fear of the unknown. To put a check to this speculation, we must set strict price control on basic foods. Corn, beans, rice, cooking oil, sugar, and milk. His advice is to set price control for basic food. Okay, we can just accept this advice, but we can go see what our other minister have to say about this. Um, so, Agriculture Ministry wants to issue warning about dangers of hoarding and speculation and call for calm. Uh, set price control, set price control, and issues warning. So, there are, we're kind of split. Uh, between the middle and the sort of the left. I think we're going to set price controls. We're, we're going to basically um, be subsidizing food. We're going to say you can only sell the food at this price. And we're going to be subsidizing that food uh, out of our pocket to get our people not starving. That is That sounds really important to me. So set price control for basic foods. All right. Let's do that. Once we unleash the energy of the people, Calderon says confidently, their contagious enthusiasm is unstoppable. To lead them, we must continue to push forward ourselves. All right. Now, we want to talk about our economy. So let's talk about getting some economic aid from the USA. They're the, the biggest player in the area, and they could send us money that we can use. We don't want to be a puppet, but we'll take their money. All right. So let's talk about economic aid from the USA. The timely development aid offered by the United States will help us get back on our feet after so many years of the dictator's mismanagement. Accept North American offers of development assistance. Let's see the advice. Uh, everyone wants us to accept it. Sounds like a good idea. Let, let's accept, accept this. Frente smile with approval. To cross a river, you must be willing to get your pants wet. It is time to start waiting, Presidente. All right. So... Aid from socialist nation, well, we'll look into that as well. But right now, we need money. And the U.S. has a lot of money. Um, oh, message from the U.S. ambassador, Bufford. I am pleased to report that my government decided to resume shipment of military aid to the Chimerican army. Our arrangements are presently being made with Colonel Horacio Herlick. Okay. Um, all right. They're just sending military equipment. They're making arrangements with the colonel of the army. Um, let's go talk to that guy, because that's a bit weird. Let's talk to the army colonel. Uh, 
El Condor. Let, let's see his his bio. It's soldiers of Crack Rapid Response Group of National Reconciliation Army of Chimerica. Biography of Horacio Elric Mercado. Colonel, charismatic rising star of the younger generation of army officers, when Farsente sought to increase control over the military, El Alec Balk, considering the action an affront to the army's honor, joined the Aleos breakaway faction as the insurrection intensified, threatening to get out of hand. Okay, so he's part of the old army, but he kind of joined a new army, and he wanted to stay separate from the government. So he wants to keep his power. All right, let's see what he has to say. Colonel Ehrlich welcomes you briskly and proceeds to make his case. It takes work and discipline and experience to run an army, yet there are those who would cast aside the voices of experience and reason, and listen to young idealists who know only how to destroy. He fixes you with penetrating stare. To succeed will require that we be given a free hand. Do you understand me? Okay, he wants us to give him a free hand controlling the army. We don't really like the army doing its own thing. Yeah, we have two military factions, the old army and the new revolutionary, and he wants complete control over the army. Uh, let's ask for advice here. Manuel Calderon, what do you have to say? For too long, the Chimerican army has considered itself above the law, exempt from all civilian control. Subcommandante Correa, one of our two new chiefs of staff, has plans for gradual restructuring, the forced retirement of key individuals, and court martials of those guilty of crimes. In this way, he may be able to create a responsible and manageable force. Well... That sounds a lot better. So yeah, let's let's support the new guy. The colonel stands motionless, as if expecting something more. Very well, he finally says. But you are playing with a snake, Excellency. Be careful. If the snake spites you, there is no remedy at the pharmacy. He wheels about sharply and strides away, somehow forgetting to salute you. Uh, <laughs> this guy is going to be a problem. Yeah, we don't want too much power over the army, but we don't want the army breaking the law and doing whatever they want. Like, we, we were talking about integration here of, you know, in a manageable way, which is what we want. Commander Calderon raises fist in the National Liberation Salute. With this decision, we send the people yet another revolutionary, competitive, and profound message of fraternal solidarity. Long live the triumph of revolution. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, dead squad, dead squids. <laughs> no, not dead squids. Yeah, we're gonna have some problem with dead squads. Okay. Um, we want to sort out our economy right now. So let's go talk to the IMF representative. Uh, let's see what they have to say. Alice Beetle Sourwine. A uh, decision made by the International Monetary Fund, often called the lender of last resort, will decisively influence the choice other international financial institutions make about whether to extend loans to a given country. Okay. Um, let's see what, we, what she has to say. The new government of Chimerica faces many difficulties, but also many opportunities, Sarah Wine says encouragingly. I am pleased to report that we have approved the package of loans designed to stimulate the production of your primary export crops. Okay, so she wants us to take new loans. Um, that's taking more debt. Uh, let's see what our Ferrante has to say. The confidence international financial institutions have shown our new government is gratifying. We must hasten to take advantage of their offers of assistance. Okay, they want to. He wants us to negotiate rescheduling of debt and secure future loans. So not only get new loans, but also reschedule the existing debt. That sounds a lot better. Because we don't just want to pile more debt, because we won't be able to pay it. So we're going to take his advice. It will be a pleasure, Sauron says with practiced warmth, to be of some assistance in the economic recovery of your nation. Awesome. Brenda gives a slight bow. Be assured, Presidente, that the loyal officials of our ministry will warmly welcome the news of this decision. Excellent. Um, you want to talk to the USSR ambassador? Let's talk to the USA ambassador first. No, let's talk to the USSR ambassador. Let's see if we can get some help from them. Vladimir N. Razumov. Economic aid from the USSR may consist of oil machinery at concessionary rates, trade credits, and technical assistance. Hard currency in short supply in the USSR itself is rarely offered. Okay, so they're not going to give us any money, but they're going to give us, like, 
machinery and some of their expertise and some oil. You know, let's 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 see what we can get. As the leading socialist nations in the world, Ambassador Razumov offers, we will be happy to assist the new Chimerica in whatever ways we can. We can offer generous loan terms for the latest design in agricultural equipment, direct from the Ukraine. We will be happy to make available agronomist and other technical advisor as well as military equipment. Oh, military equipment from Russia, though. That's not gonna go well with the USA. Let's ask for advice. Um, we cannot afford to refuse economic aid from any source willing to offer it. Ideally, we would ask for hard currency to buy replacement parts for equipment we already have. Second best would be new machinery on good terms. We've always used technology from the USA, though. If we start getting things from countries with different technical standards, we end up with a lot of compatibility problems. We should definitely draw the line at military aid. Like it or not, the USA dominates this region. We cannot afford to offend Washington. Okay, yeah, let's get economic aid, but no military assistance. Let's accept this advice. Let us drink to the success of the Chimerican Revolution, Razumov says with satisfaction. The people of the Soviet Union and of Chimerica are comrades in arm in the common struggle. Their friendship is firm. Prentice smiles with approval. To cross a river, you must be willing to get your pants wet. It is time to start waiting, Presidente. All right. Um, I would like to talk to the USA ambassador to secure some generous term of uh, getting money and stuff. Yeah, let's go talk to the USA ambassador. Yeah, Francisco is really pragmatic. Like he, he was a good choice. He'll he'll get us through some tough situation. Uh, Quentin Bufford. All right, aid from the USA may involve generous funding and technical assistance for various developmental projects, depending on the recipient country's strategic situation. It may also include training for police forces and direct allocation of currency to the treasury. Right. Okay. Well, let's go see what you have. Personally, I believe our mutual interests well served, Ambassador says, by the sort of development project we have established in your country. I must report, however, that not all members of my government share this view. There is some sentiment in Congress against sending any aid at all. Until such time as these disputes are resolved, we will be unable to increase the level of aid. Okay. Uh, what do we have for advice? North Americans have taken a wait and see attitude towards a revolution, offering a limited amount of aid. We must make them understand that only through tackling the problems of poverty will true stability be achieved in Chimerica. All right, his advice is to make the U.S. ambassador make our case in Washington. All right, that sounds that sounds pretty good. Thanks, Francisco. You you my number one. Number one guy. Then it's agreed, Buffett says with a firm handshake. Okay, America and the USA shall be partners in progress. Our unique reservoir experienced engineers, scientists, and agri business managers will be at your disposal. Great. And to give a side bow, be assured, President Tate, that the loyal officials of our ministry will warmly welcome the news of this decision. Okay. Um, let's go check on other pressing matter. Land reform, the dictator's estate... That would be good to take care of. Military aid from the USA, death squad and human rights, control of the army. Uh, that, those death squad, squads, we're going to need to... Um, uh, we'll, we'll check the newspaper sort of at, at the end of the season, uh, Jack Notch. Internal affairs. Mm, corruption. All right, I think I want to talk about the dictator's estate because we have like t about 25% of the land is owned by the old dictator's estate, by the state, and that's not making anything. So we need to work on what we can do with that. Managing the Farsante estate as state-owned properties is a terrible idea. Without an owner putting in long hours worrying about the success of his business, no one has the incentive to run such farm efficiently. Coffee can best be produced on small and medium-sized farm. We recommend a gradual policy of privatization with emphasis on enlarging the size of existing small farms. Okay. That seems like a good idea. What other advice have we got? Um... Oh, our defense minister wants to manage most of the dictator's land as state farms. State farms, though. I don't think we should be meddling with that right now. I think that's a lot of work that a government uh, shouldn't be doing. So we're going to be kind of being a bit more centrist. Let's give off this land 
to sort of people who already produce coffee but that can use more land and produce more coffee and make us more money. So I think that's what we should go for. Okay, America needs more of this way of thinking, Presente Artis says graciously. It will be a pleasure to carry this matter onward. Excellent. Um, now, we were also talking about land reform here. That's going to be um, a big issue. Let's talk about land reform. The people of the countryside grow restless. Too many poor families have barely land enough to grow corn and beans to feed themselves. Many more have no land at all. They look with envy at their neighbors and bosses, some of whom own vast estates with thousands of hectares of unused land. This is bad. People are starving. The voice demanding change grow louder and louder. We have no choice but to break up some of the largest estates. Announce a plan to develop land reform program. Okay, what's the advice? Give power and wealth to the poor through a land reform program or just a plan to develop land. Like, the land is really badly split right now. I think we need to get the poor on, on our side and just start, start to give them power and wealth through land reform. Like, it's not going to be massive, right? But it says, like power and wealth, but it's really about giving them enough to feed themselves. And a piece of land to own, right? Something to own, something to defend. I think we're going to go pretty hard on this one. So yeah, let's go, let's go for the, the more aggressive one. Or does nods with approval. A wise choice, President Day. Very much in keeping with our recommendation. We'll go forward with renewed confidence. Thank you, Ortiz. Okay. Um, right. It might be time to start tackling those death squads. Or healthcare? Let's let's look at the death squads. When I think of our fallen brothers, I am overcome with sadness. So many of them disappeared without a trace. So many brave sisters brutally murdered. But when I hear some people say all this must be forgotten, the murderers must be set free. In their memory, I burn with rage. Yeah, let's see advice. They all want us to arrest the member of the defeated Farsante Guard. So the Guard was, has done some really horrific things. So let's arrest them. Let's put them on trial and let's, you know, sort this out. Since the triumph of our revolution, the Commandante says firmly, there can be no substitute for boldness and decision. The people will be pleased with our progressive course. I will move swiftly to carry it forward. Excellent. In the first year of our presidency, the dry season ends and the rainy season begins. All right, so... We entered a new season. It's now the rainy season. Let's go check uh, reports and newspaper. So what happened? All right. So military expense. So military expense has gone down because, and, you know, we're no longer at, uh, at war. Yeah, no, the, the Farsante Guard is some really crazy people, Jack Notch. And we're receiving some uh, military aid from the USA. Some military aid. Okay. All right. Uh, our social spending. All right, so infrastructure has leveled up. Uh, we're now education, healthcare stayed the same. Uh, we're giving food price subsidies, so we're starting to lose a little bit of money because of that. Our infant mortality rate is just as bad. Land distribution. So we've started giving out some of the land that the state owned. That's really good. And the private owners and the wealthiest 5% have been taking that land. You can see it go up. Our food crops. Oh, okay, so the number of people starving has gone down significantly to about 50%, so that's 10%. But our production of corn and bean is going down. Export crops, um, we are... Coffee production is kind of constant. Cotton production is going down a little bit. Um... Yeah, or the money we're making, at least we stabilize it from going down. Uh, currency reserve is going down and our debt is increasing. And we're getting a ton of loans. And some aid. From a lot of places. Okay. We should talk to our food and export crop grower. Yeah, probably. Let's go, let's go check the news. Um... 
Sooner or later, the food producers will suffer most from these price controls. When the campesinos who grow our corn and beans can't make enough money selling their crops to make farming worthwhile, what will the government do then? All right, they didn't like our price control. The country cannot afford to continue using foreign currency to buy corn and beans from abroad. Abroad, we must boost our own production of the food we eat. Price controls by themselves, however, are not likely to result in higher food production. Okay. Uh, though the present day has not asked for military aid, the U.S. in its wisdom has decided to send it anyway. Is Chimerica a child to be treated so? Will the president take permit this to continue? Okay, we we don't like that. State Department spokesman Onret announced that the U.S. would soon resume shipment of military aid to Chimerica, which has been suspended a year ago. We hope this will help to stabilize a still very tense situation. Yeah, you know, the situation stands. All we need is more guns. If the education note exchange agreement goes as planned, a thousand Cuban elementary teacher and 40 university professor will spend the next year in Chimerica. At the same time, 700 lucky students will win scholarship to Cuban University. Apparently, President Day refused military aid, though Salsa has reportedly been offered by our international friends, a curious decision concerning the many danger facing us. Yeah, so we got some educational exchange going on with Cuba. It's great. Details of the new land reform program has yet to be announced. May the forces of reason and moderation yet prevail over the foolish passion that seemed to have swept through the capital like a hurricane. A glorious new epoch begin. With the announcement of its intention to promote land reform, the revolutionary government took a bold step towards a future bright with promise. Details of the new land reform program have yet to be announced. May the forces of reason and mother... Okay, now we're going, we're going back, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so let's go talk to... Um, let's go talk to our um, coffee growers, which we care about a lot. Jesus Cabrales Murillo at the National Bank of Chimerica. Okay. Establish lending priorities and manage the country's use of hard currency. Okay. Um, when a new government comes to power, many things change, Cabrales declares. But one thing will never change. A farmer needs credit to be able to produce crops. Most coffee planters in Chimerica have a small farms or medium-sized one like your, my own. When the coffee fungus attacks our trees, new ones must be planted. Where is the money to come from? Okay, he wants us to direct the National Bank to give priority to producer of export crops. Um, she agrees. In deciding how to encourage the growth of our agricultural economy, we must consider our international reputation. Encouraging the export producer is the best way to present Chimerica as a fiscally responsible member of the international community. All right, so let's give the, the money to our export crop grower. Your visit is an honor, President Tay says warmly. Our cup runs over with joy. May you always be as welcome as you are today. Excellent. Uh, the campesino, I think they grow the, the edible food and not export crops. Let's go talk to them next because people are starving. Uh, yeah, campesino are a small-scale grower of beans and corn, mostly scattered throughout the mountainous region of the country, produce 85% of Karmarka's staple food. So they produce 85% of our food. So they're, they're important. Uh, present day, when you set those low prices for corn and beans in the market, did you think about how much it cost the campesino to grow them? The price for everything else changed every day. Do I have to tell you that the prices do not go down? If we cannot sell for more than what we pay, what is the reason to get out of bed in the morning? All right, he wants us to eliminate all controls on food prices. Um, and she agrees with that. I don't agree with that. I want to subsidize it. Let's go put that proposal on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, crap. Subcommandant Tecoria, Joint Chief of Staff of the Reconciliation Army, insists on seeing you in a matter of utmost important. Okay. Uh, Gabriel Correa Fernandez, you must be aware, Presidente, that the United States has begun sending military equipment directly to the faction of our army controlled by Colonel Ehrlich. This direct tie between my counterpart and a powerful foreign country seriously undermines my authority. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Like, half the military is getting guns? Uh, let's see our the advice. Yeah, we need to assert authority. Like, we need to decide where the aid comes from and where it goes. Like, we're the Presidente here. Let's, let's, let's accept this advice. Uh, we must protect the revolution at all costs, he says with determination. Here, no one surrenders. Our enemies shall not pass. 
Long live the triumph of the revolution. Uh, the ambassador of the United States, oh, America urgently requests that you allow him to visit you on a matter of state importance. Why was it thought necessary, the ambassador asked sharply, to alter the traditional professional relationship between our two militaries? The decision to interpose the office of the president in a purely military matter has provoked a certain degree of wariness, especially in the Pentagon. Do you really mean to decline military assistance completely? Uh, you want us to return to traditional arrangement of direct contact between the U.S. and American military. Uh, let's see if, if we have any advice. Aid freely given is one thing. Aid with such string attached is unacceptable. Yeah. We... We need control over our army. We can't let our army coup us. We can't let them just do whatever they want. Yeah, and we need, we need control over this. I am not sure, the ambassador says frustly, that you fully understand the potential consequences of your acts. In matter that might affect the national security of the United States, we pay very particular attention to such acts and to their consequences. Right. Oh my god! Thousands of angry laborers stream in front of the countryside to fill the square in front of the national pass, chanting, give us land now! Claudio Aguilar speaks for the land now movement. We have heard much talk about reform of the land. This made us happy, at long last, justice. What has come of this? My present day, the process is still slow, and we cannot wait forever. The land, salted with the sweat of our ancestor, belongs to those who have worked it for so long. We are tired of promises. We demand only what is rightfully ours. Announce plan to give power and wealth to the poor through a land reform. Um, develop a land reform program. No, no, look. We are planning to give a lot of the land to the poor people. We want to move it away from the really rich people, even if we have to pay for it. Uh, we're going to agree to this. Smile comes to Aguilar's weather and worn face. My Presidente, your words fall on my ears like the first rains of the earth at the end of the dry season. We will pray for you. Art is nods with approval. A wise choice, Presidente, very much in keeping with our recommendation. All right. Whew. Okay. Yeah, this place is not very nice. Um, All right, let's go talk to uh, eliminate all controls on food prices. I don't think control of marketing of the exports would be a good thing to look into as well. Let's talk about the control of marketing of our exports. Large export producers already have enough cloud to get good terms when they sell to transnational exporters. But what about all the small producers, especially of coffee? They don't have enough leverage. We propose an alternative, a voluntary national marketing board to compete with private marketers, buying crops at the same floating price offered to the larger farms. That sounds like a good idea. And every... Oh, the national marketing board, the sole buyer and seller Right, but that's kind of, that's a bit harsh. No, it's going to be voluntary, right? If you think it's going to help you sell your coffee, then you should go through there. Yeah, a voluntary national marketing board. To cross a river, you must be willing to get your pants wet. Yep, all right. You think the CIA is planning to assassinate me? Oh my god. Strikes in several Poye factory quickly escalated into a general strike against most industrial employers. Union leader Hector Ferreira acts as spokesman of the striker. What do you want? Under the dictator, Farah says with feeling, to organize a union was not a struggle. It was always a battle. If his downfall is to mean anything to us workers, we must have full freedom to defend our rights. Wages are so low, it is hard for many to even put tortillas on the table. Guarantee unions the right to organize and strike. Um, the workers are the backbone of the revolution. Yeah, we're going to guarantee unions the right to organize and strike. Trace of a smile appears on Ferrara's lips and quickly fades away. These words are good to hear, Presidente. We understand them well. But before we can get too excited, we must see if the men from the ministry understand them as well. The revolution truly serves the people, Julio Oliveira says. It will remind us of those crosses that we ought to bear but find it convenient to ignore. It is good to see you take up your responsibility with such an even hand. 
okay, I would like to take care of education and medicine, but I need to get the food situation under control. Let's talk about shortages of food. I don't want to eliminate price control. The fa fable generosity of revolutionary is catching up with us. We can no longer afford to subsidize our consumers so lavishly. We've been selling corn beans and other staples for less than we paid for them. And who has been paying for the trucks to bring these products to market, to dry them, store them, package them, and mister the whole process? We have. Yeah, no. We're going to guarantee food producer a fair price. We're going to pay the difference. We're going to get debt. If it gets food to the people, it's temporary. Right? It's important to st stimulate this part of our economy. So this is what we're going to do. Artis stiffens and closes her eyes for a moment while she absorbs this news. Very well, she says after a time, we will do our best. Oh, she doesn't like that. Oh, God. Mothers of the disappeared. Hundreds of women dressed in black march throughout the street of the capital, carrying large crosses and banners reading, Where are our children? Spokeswoman for the mothers is Senora Gloria Mendoza Lerma. Okay. The friends of the Guardia murderers have set them free, Mendoza says angrily. The jackal Padilla, who used to burn our children's feet with torches and throw their bodies from the heights of cliffs. Freed! How can this be? Help us, President We only ask for justice. Oh my god, okay. Um, this is, uh, do I want to seek Soviet aid? I will need to seek Soviet aid. I will. Um, put Farsente guard to her back in prison. This will be a great test of our fate, Father Julio says with strong emotion. Many noble young men and women were tortured, beaten, kept in isolation cell for months at a time, with no light, no contact with others, barely enough food to stay alive. As Christians, we must not demand an eye for an eye, a toot for a toot, but we must not permit the wicked to go unpunished. Arrest the member. So we either arrest them and put them on trial again, but they just got out. Or we... Or we just throw them in jail, but we can't just throw them in jail, like... I mean, those are some really bad people. Let's, let's just arrest them. We're going to arrest them. Mendoza bows her head and said silent for a moment as if praying. Then she looks up, eyes moist. As it says in the Bible, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. When the crosses we bear become too heavy, we may be forgiven for trying to lighten the burden with a revolutionary change. So let it be. In the first year of your, of your presidency, the rainy season ends and the harvest season begin. Whew. All right. Uh, that was a lot of stuff that just happened. Let's take a short break right here. Thanks a lot for watching. Coulez ces malandrins! Hissez les hautes voiles! Plein bordé! These chrysalids seem a little smaller than I remember. Then again, it was never really their size we had to worry about.